So, you think you have mold? In modern day, you can't talk about mold without hearing the word ERMI. So what exactly is ERMI? ERMI is a test developed by the EPA that utilizes MSQ-PCR technology to identify spores and fragments of mold particles for 36 different species of mold. It is a test that used to be used by licensed mold professionals and has now entered pop culture. This video is going to make sure you have an understanding of how to utilize it properly so you can get the results you're looking for with ease. Let's start with what ERMI is used for. The EPA analyzed 1,096 homes in order to develop an average of what would be considered normal. These homes were analyzed under normal living conditions. They were not taken after a remediation or during a construction project. This means that in order to analyze an ERMI properly, you wanna make sure that it is being taken under normal living conditions for the data to be useful to you. If you are going to use ERMI as a measure of success after a remediation, it's important that you understand how remediation and air pressurization works. Otherwise, you're likely to get disappointed in the remediation process. When you are remediating a bathroom on the second floor of a home, as an example, that bathroom is going to be put under negative pressure to ensure that any work done in the bathroom does not cross-contaminate into the environment. However, when you put a room under negative pressure, you also inadvertently draw air from other interstitial cavities across the home back into the living environment because the air is being drawn towards that bathroom. I can guarantee you, if you were to do an ERMI outside the bathroom before remediation and after you remediate the bathroom, the ERMI would go up. This doesn't mean the remediation failed. It just means that you must clean the home after any remediation, whether it is one room or five, in order to remove the contaminants that are trapped behind walls, because no matter what pressurization you try to do, you are going to cause air to move around the building, and prior to the remediation, these contaminants have been moving around too. The next thing to talk about is the score. The score is measured by the sum of logs in group one being subtracted by the sum of logs in group two. In order to get this ideal negative score, you have to have more common molds in the environment than water damage molds. However, when you're removing contamination, you don't exactly get to choose which molds you're removing. You remove all at once. So there's no way to guarantee that the score improves. In fact, no one has any control over the score, which is probably why the EPA has not officially signed off on this technology for public use the way it's being used today. So how do you measure success after remediation? Well, the most important part of remediation is ensuring that the sources have been eliminated. This is done by a visual inspection with a licensed mold assessor who will also take air samples and surface samples of the remediated areas to ensure there is nothing that was missed that the naked eye cannot see. Eliminating the sources of contamination is like getting rid of the factories producing the contamination. Anything you do to reduce the ERMI without first finding and locating the sources is a waste of time and money. It's like trying to clean up an overflowing bathtub without first shutting off the faucet. The second thing you want to do is get a jump start in reducing the contamination. You see, if you aren't gutting the entire home or building, you have to understand that mold has been circulating up to this point and is likely being trapped in interstitial areas and will continue to circulate around the home for periods of time thereafter. If you've ever done a renovation, you know that pesky drywall dust will continue to make its way for weeks to months after the renovation, no matter how many times you clean. This is the same thing with mold. ERMI should not be used as a red light to stop rebuilding unless you have reason to believe that the data found in the ERMI shows there's an additional source. Sources should not be built over, but cleaning before, during, and after construction will continue to yield results as you remove the dust harboring these toxic compounds. Keeping in mind that you should only test the environment as you would live in it for an accurate comparison. As a forewarning, it will take months after remediation to continuously clean as these particles continue to circulate and settle. The victory here is that there are no more sources to keep creating particles so that the toxic burden lessens and lessens with each cleaning. Our recommendation is to test three to six months later to ensure the score has continued to improve. If not, this likely means that there's still a hidden source somewhere. It does not undo what you did. But to achieve further results, 
you'll need to find it, eliminate it, and continue to clean. I hope this clears up any confusion around Ermi and allows you to take bite-sized steps towards building yourself a healthy home. After all, health begins at home. Thank you.